Everybody, my name Brother Derek here. Um, <laughs> I fell asleep. I'm sorry, everybody. It's something going on in the projector paint screen sector, and um, it's keeping me occupied. But I promise a WWE review. Um, I just woke up, and so uh, I already started with um. Oh, that's my girl Thea Hill. I don't know why they're trying to make her slutty. She was better as a cheerleader. And her energy, the energy that she had, is what makes her great. But, you know, creative things, they know better. But anyway, so I just put on NXT and I'm going to watch that. And uh, do a review on that tomorrow, or I'm going out tomorrow live. So I might talk about what happened. But anyway, WWE Raw. We started out with Drew McIntyre. And now they're trying to make Drew McIntyre a heel. Ah. It, it's a nice try to redo McIntyre. I ain't gonna lie, I'm sick of him. <laughs> I was sick of him. So at least now he got a little bit of fire to him. So I'll give him that. He got a little bit of fire to him now. So, you know. I'll give it to him. At least they found something for him to do. Man, he beat up Sami Zayn bad. He beat up Sami Zayn. He beat him in the ring. <clears throat> then he beat him up behind stage. So, so Drew McIntyre gonna be feeding with Sami Zayn. Then they had the tag team match with the three. Um, they had the two out of three fall. Johnny Gargano, Gargano, Gargano and uh. Gunther Boys. And I ain't gonna lie, I went in there and started cooking, so I don't know who won that. <laughs> the last I looked, it was 1 1. Somebody would have said in the comment section. I ain't gonna lie. You know, I could skip that. Johnny Gargano and uh, Tommaso Chapa and uh, Gunther Boys. Yeah, I can skip that. You had um, Nia Jax. She pulled up on the man, Becky Lynch. And those of you that remember, not Nia Jax made Becky Lynch when by mistake she broke her face. And the fans felt sorry for her as she got put into that main event. And that's how Becky Lynch became famous and became the man. But she never, because um, Nia Jax, because of, of her weight, she had um her knees worked on, both of them. So they never had that match. You know, remember, by accident, Nia Jax broke Becky's face, and Becky never got her revenge. So it looks like um real one the other day. So they tried to make Nia Jax. Mind me of yesterday episode. Mind you, there wasn't no CM Punk. Mind you, there wasn't no Randy Orton. But Randy Orton signed, you know, Randy Orton signed with a. Uh, what's his name? He signed with SmackDown. My apologies, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I was trying to check her butt out. Hey, it got caught mid I ain't gonna try to lie. <laughs> and that gonna try to lie. Um, finally, finally, Katana Chance and Kaden Carter, a real tag team. Something WWE need for the tag team division. A real, t a real tag team actually got a win yesterday. Why they not pushing Katana Chance and Kaden Carter? I just don't know. Now, you know, Katana is on the small side. But they've been tagging together for four or five years. Most of the WWE tag teams have been makeshift for the women. It's just been two women thrown together. These women were on NXT. They were NXT champions. They are a real tag team. He brought them up 
early in the year and we only see him job. Why hasn't he put them out there? This is the first time they got a win. They got a pretty good, that's their pretty good tag team. That's what you need. I don't know why you got Piper Bivid and Chelsea Green. Except for comedy reasons, I guess, but seriously. I don't know why they the tag team champions. Seriously. But I guess, you know. I guess uh, you know. They ain't gonna let nobody fat be the champion, I guess. And I gonna let nobody fat be the champion, I guess that's what it is. You know? Oh, for those of y'all that don't know, we got the new projector bug and we got our 45 A back. And we're looking at it right now. On the ceiling. But um, it's good to see Triple H finally getting around to pushing them. I don't know what he's going to do with Indy Hartwell. Because she gave up her NXT championship to come up to Raw. And she ain't done nothing. She had one match with Becky Lynch and got jobbed out. And they jobbed her out to Zia Lee. And then Zia Lee wrestled Becky Lynch and got jobbed out. And then she wrestled some, a woman on the NXT Women's Champion and got jobbed out. So you made her look good for two weeks then jobbed out. Seriously. They made her look good for two weeks. And then jobbed out. Twice in the same week. Man. It must be nice to have so many stars you just job them out. Seriously. They had this great package of Jay Uso. Jay Uso. Even showing him back in, in the, um, the Ohio Valley days. And, it, you know, it was about back when it was just me. Before it became about my twin brother. Before it became about Roman Reigns. Before it became day one ish. Before it became the Uso Penitentiary, before it became the Bloodline. That was a nice package. And watching that made you want to see Jay win. And that's what AEW lacks. Even if you didn't know you was a new person tuning in, packages like that make you want to root for the guy. Even if you don't know who they are. This is what AEW needs. Why am I rooting for Orange Cassidy? Why am I rooting for MJF? Why do I care about a Brian Danielson? Make me care. Make me care. Why do I care about Jungle? Why do I care? Who is he? Just somebody to get in there and do some flips. My washing machine stuff. Why, why should I care? That's what's missing from AEW. Why should I care? I'll give you an example. Adam Cole. He ain't big as a minute. It's not believable. He can beat anybody. He look like he's sick. Look like he on meth or crack. Look like he's he got cancer. He's drying up. But people felt sorry for him after he got injured. And they took that sorriness and matched him up with MJF. They took that sorriness. We felt sorry for you. And you actually cared about him. And you ignored the fact that it's impossible for a man that size to get there and do what he did. You could dispel your disbelief. Like I did tonight. I knew they wasn't going to let Jay Uso win the world title for Seth Rollins. Come on, man. But the package made you want to see it. Even though you knew there was no way in the world. They had some um they had some false finishes. They had the crowd up chat this awesome. But you knew good well. It wasn't gonna let them. You know, Seth Rollins gonna hold that belt until WrestleMania. And CM Punk gonna take it. I think CM Punk taking that belt at WrestleMania. That's my opinion. It might not have, but I think it's CM Punk is going to take that belt 
for Seth Rollins. But last week it was Sami Zayn. This week it was Jay Uso. Jay Uso. At least they get the chance. But back then, nobody got a chance. Double shoulder blood. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, I was checking the ladies out. <laughs> sorry, WWE and TNA got to track the ladies. I, I don't know what the hell they got on AEW. Abaddon and... I don't know. I mean... As fat as they are. Nia Jax and Piper Dibbon are smashable. Wouldn't be your first choice. It'd be your last choice, but they smashable. But well, most of the women in AEW, except for uh, Tony Storm, and and I give Tony credit. You know, uh, uh, he brought in he brought in Kara Hogan the job out, and it was nice to see them buns. But she did she was going. He did a good job out. You knew they were going to job her out. You do it. You do it. You knew it. They jobbed her out. They sat there and got uh, Julia Hart as the world champion. I mean, as the TBS champion. Who gives a fart? Because she can't wrestle. She boring. She got no personality. And that, this this uh Black Magic uh Wednesday from the uh Adams family. I think that's her gimmick. She's Wednesday from the Adams family. With the House of Black. And I'm not getting it. I'm just not getting it. And I, mean, I, I don't get it. She, she's boring. She can't wrestle. And she's boring. She cannot wrestle. I'm sorry. She, she needs more seasoning. <clears throat> and what Tony Khan like her. And what the big in there like is what you get. What the big in there like. Because he's a big in there and he don't give a damn what we think. And that's why his ratings is where they are, because he don't care about what the people want to see. He could, he do what he want to do. He does what he wants to do, and he don't care whether you watch it or don't watch. He ain't got buy ticket to show him him being there. He don't care. He does not care. His, his ego might care a little bit, but he do what he want. He got his action figures. They're not human beings to him. They little action figures that he booking. Like you see a little child door with the little wrestling ring on the table. He, he's living the childhood dream and he's booking wrestlers. And that's what he doing. That is what he's doing. Anyway, um, back to the Raw. This is a Raw review, not an AEW review. But, like I said, Chance and Carter finally get a win, so hopefully they'll get a title shot. And maybe we can get some real tag team, some real women tag team champions instead of these makeshift teams. Like, Natalia going to be with everybody and win a title. Pretty soon it's going to be Natalia and Dick get Cross. But, they have they have um Indy Hartwell and the Poison Pixie, Johnny Gargano wife. They tagged together in NXT. That's another tag team. Why are they not doing nothing with them? On SmackDown, they don't even have any women tag team. People to fight for their women tag team. But WWE likes to mix and match. They'll probably put Bianca with somebody and make them a tag, they go a tag team, or put Charlotte Flair with somebody and make them a tag team, or put two of the Japanese together, girls together, make a tag team, or or Megan and Dakota Kai. You see what I'm saying? WWE like to mix and match as needed. They'll mix and match them as needed. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Instead of just having a division, there would be one challenger at a time instead of having a division. 
and they'll do a um a elimination tag team match to the, get a number one contender. And it'll be somebody big shift for the moment that'll win. And that's why the division is doomed, because they don't have they don't keep anybody solid. How many times is Shayna Baszler won the tag team championship? How many times Nia Jax won tag team championship? How many times Piper Devin won tag team championship? How many times did Italia won the women's tag team championship? But where are these women at on the card? Nowhere. They nowhere. They are nowhere. Like that song said, they are no ways tied. They no ways tied. They ain't got nowhere. So, um, Sami Zayn was back with the trainer. They were looking at his leg. Drew McIntyre came back there. You talk about my family, huh? And he beat Sami Zayn up some more and left him land. So, was there any other news or note? There was no Rhea, Rhea Ripley. There was no Finn Balor. So Judgment Day didn't dominate. So we got to see some other people. Oh, um, the, the Creed Brothers. They, they remind me of the Steiners. They remind me of the Young Steiners. And I think that Triple H really liked them. He brought them up from NXT. I think he gonna push them. I think that they're gonna wind up in the tag team chance. So, um... Damian Priest, who him and Finn Balor are the tag team champions for Judgment Day, <clears throat> he said Dominic and uh, JD to go out there and, and soften up the Creed brothers before that championship match. And uh, the Creed brothers won. So they fell in that regard. And the main event. <clears throat> Jay Uso and Seth Rollins, great match. I ain't gonna lie to you, it was a great match. Great match. Jay almost had it a couple times. They made him look good. You knew he wasn't gonna win, but still, you got the moment. And people in the arena, they they were almost having heart attacks because they thought that Jay was gonna win. This is what Tony Khan can't do. That was people in the audience pissing in their pants. People in the audience pooped on themselves. They thought, Jay Uso was the world champ, yeah. And then last second get taken away. You know? AEW can't do that with you. They don't know how. That's why they can't beat WWE or something. Man, are you on? But they can't. They can't do it. They can't do it. They can't do it. He <sighs> really, I ain't gonna sleep on it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to sleep. But anyway, um, Seth Rollins won. So they had Jay lose clean. So Sami Zayn lost clean last week. And Jay Uso lost clean. So both of them jobbed out. No more title shots for a while. Drew McIntyre came down there and knocked down Seth Rollins. And he put Jay Uso through a table. So Drew McIntyre is mad at Jay Uso because he didn't he didn't beat Roman Reigns in front of his his whole country people. But the Usos at the time were not allowed to lead the country. So Jay or Jimmy Uso was not there. So why is he mad at Jay Uso? Solo Sokoa cost him the match. 
And if your answer is, well, they all look alike, then that's racist. Jay Uso or Jimmy Uso, neither one of the twins had anything to do with his loss. Neither one of them. So why is he mad at Jay Uso? It doesn't make sense. That's a logic gap. It's just a logic gap. It doesn't make any sense. So I guess the next feud is Sami Zayn and Jay will be going against Drew McIntyre. And I guess Drew McIntyre will get a buddy and they'll have some tag team matches. We didn't get nowhere with uh, Shisuke Nakamura. Oh, sh- Shiki. Shiki Tiki. Shisuke. And Cody Rhodes. Yawn, who cares? Yawn, who cares? Yawn. But it's a key Cody Rhodes busy until his WrestleMania date with Roman Reigns. That'll keep him busy. Mm, excuse me. All right, y'all, this been, right, that's been my review about SmackDown. No CM Punk, no Randy Orton, no Rhea Ripley, no Finn Balor. Who cares about him anyway? And I might miss him. But you got to see other talent. The Creed Bubbles really look good. They finally are using Katana and Chance. And hopefully they'll get the tag team championships. And we can have a real tag team. A real ladies tag team champion. So. Little by little. Triple H. They're trying to give us. What we I don't like the other company. They don't care what we want. Man honest. Anyway. But this is about Dirk. That was my WWE F Raw review. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the video. If you want to see more content, let me know in the bottom. We do a lot of content. Some of y'all might like some of the things we do. Some of y'all might not. Just ignore the stuff you don't like and enjoy the stuff you do like. We have a nice variety on this show. Y'all have a great one, and I will. Check y'all out later. Peace, I'm out.